right, guys, what are we gonna look at today? Well, we are going to look at five knives fast, and it's five knives that you may have missed the first time that you got a chance, but you definitely should be checking them out. All these knives are 10 out of 10. So, but before we go any further, I have to do that YouTuber thing and remind you guys, this channel is self-sponsored. Pretty much everything that you see can be purchased through affiliate links down below, primarily my Blade HQ affiliate link. It's gonna be where you can find most of this stuff. And I'd also like to say my buddy Polly and I, Purple Heart Barbecue, started a podcast called the Peanut Butter and Pickles Podcast. We have not put up the first episode yet, but we've been filming them. As you can see, got a peanut butter shirt. Uh, I'm peanut butter, he's pickles, because he's salty. So, guys, let's turn this around. Take a look at these five awesome, awesome 10 out of 10 knives. Absolutely recommend. We'll take a look at them from above. But first, turn down the volume, because here comes a little bit of music. jump into this we have got five knives here that have done incredibly well on the channel these are all knives that that i recommended highly when i reviewed them the first time and i just got to thinking i was like some of these knives have been out for a while some of them never got a lot of press like these two here so i just thought it would be kind of cool for us to pick out these five knives revisit them and give you guys a look at five knives that you probably should try to check out and see if are available so all right guys let's pick one i always do the middle so let's go ahead and do the middle one first so this this first knife is that Tucson 383 that came in as a gift from one of my subscribers. Actually, two of these knives were gifts from Winston Cabretti. Um, this is a great, great knife. Titanium 14C28 steel that is done incredibly well. It's really unique looking because it's got all of this checkering that's done. And all of that checkering and everything makes it incredibly light because it's been milled out on the inside as well. This thing is just about a perfect knife for an outdoor knife um, because it does have a very robust blade shape, nice drop point blade with a big belly. Gonna be very, very useful in a lot of situations. 14C28N is one of the original bushcraft steels. It takes an incredible edge. It takes an aggressive edge and it holds it really well. The other thing about it is it's really thin behind the edge and cuts really well. On top of that, it's really attractive. You've got this two-tone, you've got satin here, the grinder satin. You got grinder satin there, and then you have this really nicely done stone wash there. All of the two suns have got a very attractive pivot look to them. And like I said, with this being milled out as much as it is, because even though this has been recessed and then you know the holes all cut in it it's recessed on the inside as well and this thing is recessed very well as you can see it gets carried a lot it's got a lot of pocket line in there lock up on it is just about perfect the action on it is really really good just shy of drop shut if you're a lanyard guy you've got a lanyard hole here and like i said this is just a pretty much good all-around knife it's one of those it, it, this is a knife that i honestly rate 10 out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, really close. Pocket clip retention is great. It's just about perfect. It's not at all a hindrance on this pocket clip. It's pretty comfortable and you're getting a lot of knife at a budget price. So there you go, guys. The first knife is the Tucson TS-383. So I'll be putting the names across the bottom and you can always try and find these on Blade HQ if you want. So there you go, guys. First knife. The Tucson TS-383. Just realized something, guys. All the knives that we're looking at were gifts to me. Um, this is the Kaiser Grazioso in S35VN that uh, came in from, I'm sorry, N690. This was a gift from Jared over at Neves Knives. This knife came to me, I was really pleasantly surprised at how much I like this knife because it's not one of those knives that just falls into the category, oh yeah, it's just a useful blade. It is striking, but still super useful. It's kind of outside of what we're used to seeing in the knife community. It's got really unique lines. It's got this harpoon-esque drop point recurve blade with this big thumb area here. And then you've got those striking handles and everything like that. But on top of the fact that this knife is just drop dead gorgeous, it is a super good functional knife. 
This is a liner lock, so you don't lose any discomfort. It's easy to manipulate and operate. The action on it is great. The blade has held up incredibly well. I have really not had to sharpen this at all. All I've had to do is touch this up on a ceramic rod, and 690 is really easy to maintain. Um, this knife spends a lot of time in pocket. It's done in copper and G10, so you can get that copper to patina, and you can see there you're starting to see some, some coloration on that. It just is gorgeous, and that gives it some really, really good weight. The G10 is done really well. All the lines on it are really good. Action is amazing. The pocket clip is a fairly deep carry pocket clip. Um, it doesn't go all the way back because there is, you know, you have this chamfer here, but deep carry pocket clip that is really comfortable nice slender package but it's got a lot of cutting potential because it's got that recurve day-to-day -day task this thing is great nice beautiful gentleman's carry and like i said the action on it just it just slams open and it's just shy of drop shut i'm sure if i took this part cleaned it up that it would be drop shut because it was before but yeah there you go guys the kaiser grazioso by designed by Sharif Manganis over at Mangana Steel. All right, guys, this next knife was given to me by the designer, Eric Oaks. This is the Oaks Works EDX Offspree, and this is a great little kind of almost a fishing or like a bird and trout knife. Um, it's done in titanium and G10 M390 steel. These were a run of uh, basically a... Uh, a production series of his knives that he had done. They're all serialized M390. This one is number 150. Um, nice hollow ground blade. It comes down to a really piercing point. Super comfortable in hand. You do have a little bit of a sharp area here, but it's chamfered pretty well. It is a very, very attractive little knife. It is a bolster lock with an integral bolster because you have the full titanium and then these G10 overlays that sink in inlays. Nice pocket clip that is reversible. If you're a lanyard hole guy, you got the lanyard. Um, but overall, really super functional knife. Great, great, great little cutter. Not a real big knife. It's just in that size range that I have really started to become really very um, drawn to because it is a fair, it's an extremely functional size because it's not too big. You've got a lot of control and you can get right up on it, do detail work. Um, this would be an outdoors knife that I would carry. It's nice hollow ground, good thick blade stock that comes down to a nice edge. Super, super aggressively sharp with a nice sharpening choil and everything like that. It does have the fuller. You can actually, if you've got, you can actually finger reverse flick it off of the fuller. Great, great little knife. These things were a little bit more pricey, but they're done really well. I believe, if I remember correctly, the, the machining and everything was done by Riat. The OEM was done for Eric by Riat. So nice, nice knife. Really thoughtful gift. I was happy when this showed up. It's been in my pocket a lot. It gets a lot of carry time because it is a very, very nice little functional knife. Uh, probably something that I'll be passing to my daughter so that she has a couple nice little small knives for her. So there you go. The Oxworks EDX Osprey. All right, guys, this was my 2020 knife of the year. This is the Wee Minax designed by my friend Elliot Williamson over at Farron Forge Knife Works. This knife is a complete and utter beast when it comes to cutting. This thing, uh, this is one of the prototypes. Elliot gave this to me as a gift so that I had one. Um, he had one that was one of the final versions. These were done in M390. As a matter of fact, mine even says prototype on the blade here. So uh, this was a new design that Elliot had come up with. It was a more robust blade. It's the first recurve that he ever did. Um, reverse flick, forward flick, titanium and M390 steel. These things are great. They cut incredibly well because they are really thin behind the edge and they're done in a great, great steel M390. The reason I love this knife so much is it's just a pretty good balance. You've got comfortable handles, nice broad blade that, like I said, comes down about as thin as anything I've had on the channel in a long time. The action on them is great. We Knife Company always delivers when it comes to doing good quality machining and providing a good clean knife. The lines on it are really cool. A lot of people say that it's kind of phallic looking. I don't care. I like the knife. I like the design. 
if you've got if you've got a lot of work to do, this thing's gonna get it done. Uh, I haven't ever had any issues with the uh, with the steel being too thin, with the knife wanting to cut. I will say that it, the the two recurves that we're, we've got on here on this video sometimes will pose a problem for people to sharpen, but you know in the big scope of things, they're gonna give you so much more cutting potential. So yeah, great great knife. Listen to that action, bang, just slams open. Either way you do it, the, the big aperture on that reduces some of the blade weight and gives you a really good purchase for that. The jimping's just about perfect. One of those, you know, it's rare for me to have a knife that gets a 10 out of 10. All three of the knives you're looking out, 10 out of 10 in my book, 100% would recommend. So there you go, the Wii Minax designed by Elliot over at Fair and Forge Knife Works. And finally, guys, if I had to pick a favorite of the bunch that you just saw, I have to say that this would be it. I was really surprised when I got this knife, really pleasantly surprised. Even I don't, I'm not such a fan of the fact that the pocket clip moves so much. And I told the designer as much, I can overlook that. It's, that is a very, very minimal thing. This is the PMP big boy in 14C 28N in titanium. Probably one of the best knives I've had come in in a very long time. Um, my buddy Tino said it, and I 100% agree. This is like a budget, bigger version of one of the uh, Shirogorov knives. This thing is great in hand, really fills the hand. Cutting is a dream because you don't get any fatigue because the handle just is just about perfect. Nice amount of jimping. 14C28 and blade that is done nice and broad, not super thick blade stock. So it transitions down really thin and nice, takes a screaming sharp edge and it holds it really, really well. And it cuts so well because it is one of those blades that is nice and thin. Even if it starts to get dull, you've got good blade geometry behind the edge. Um, nice blade shape. It's drop point with a big flat area. Then it transitions into a belly. So it's going to be really good for a lot of outdoor uh, outdoor tasks because you've got the best of both worlds. You've got that nice straight area for doing things like feather sticking. You've got this for skinning if you're out in the field. Beautiful, well done swedge on the top that just gives it a nice clean look. And I mean, it's clean and plain and simple. Reversible pocket clip. This pocket clip does move a lot, but I will say there's no hot spots with it because it's completely rounded. The only issue I ever had with this, uh, one day I was pretty sweaty. I was wearing a pair of white shorts and uh, I carried this in my waistband all day and I did get some rust from the pocket clip. So pocket clip is not 100% stainless, but I mean, 10 out of 10, 100% recommend this one. It's rare for me to have knives that get you know, that don't have too many issues with them that I find. The only thing I would change on this knife is I would put this on the inside as opposed to the outside and use a different pocket clip. Maybe maybe the same pocket clip, but something a little bit thicker, stronger that doesn't move as much. So there you go, guys. That was number five, the PMP Big Boy. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts. There you go, guys. That was five knives that are just amazing knives that you may have missed when they became available. They should still be available. I didn't look at availability when I looked on Blade HQ, but I have to say out of all of them, I think that this PMP Big Boy is my favorite of the ones we showed there. Um, because it, as my buddy Tino likes to say, it's like an overgrown Shiro. It's like a budget Shiro Gorov, and it is great. The action and everything on it is amazing. So big shout out to Winston Cobretti for this gift. Guys, that's it on this one. Uh, if you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the content, give it a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change that content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you wanna support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you hit the bell icon, make sure that you turn on notifications on your device so that you get notified of all the content that goes up. Um, if you want to support the channel financially, there's a handful of ways I mentioned at the very beginning of the show um, that I am self-sponsored. So I have memberships down below. It's tier based. Pick a membership that gets you what you want out of it. But just remember, everyone saves five dollars off my sharpening service and everyone has access to my gilded server. But if you're a premium tier member, you have access to a sharpening tutorial series I've built. Um, the affiliate links that I mentioned are all down below. There's Amazon stuff. There is Blade HQ. There's a coffee company. There's a VPN, all kinds of stuff. None of it costs you any extra at checkout to use my affiliate link. They just provide me a little bit of your money at checkout as a bonus. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. 
I have set up a coupon code that saves you 10% anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. That coupon code is crazy sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, crazy sharp, saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures, you wear my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you in the next video.